All right, so the next panel we're going to discuss is the hue, saturation, luminance, color, and black and white color treatment panel right here. Now, previously we talked about vibrance and saturation as a method of adjusting color in the in the basics panel right here. How does that compare to the color treatments panel that we have here? Well, basically vibrance and saturation are kind of very imprecise tools when you compare them to this actual color treatment panel. From here, we can adjust every single color in our image to a different hue, to a different level of saturation, as well as a different level of luminance or brightness, which gives us a, a ton of discretion that we can have in not only fixing our images, but also artistic discretion in creating really cool effects, which we'll show you guys in later tutorials. But for now, let's get into how exactly this panel works. Now, the hue, saturation, luminance, and the color view, these are two different views for the exact same thing. So what you'll notice here is in the hue, saturation, luminance, we have hue adjustments. If we click to here, we have saturation adjustments, which is going to deal with basically the overall saturation of a certain color. And then we have the luminosity, which is going to deal with the overall brightness of a specific color. If I switch to the color view, it's just showing me the exact same thing. We have the same colors, except it just shows me a color palette. And then it gives me the same options here. So I have the red selected, and I have hue, saturation, and luminance. If I switch back, I have the exact same thing. I have reds, except I'm just reviewing it a little bit differently. Now if I click on all over here, it's going to show me basically all my hue, saturation, and luminance in one big stack. I kind of like to keep it a little bit smaller, a little bit more easily viewable, and deal with one thing at a time. So typically I'll just have one of these items selected. So hue is going to deal with basically the overall color tone of a specific color in your image. Now predominantly this image is blue, so let's kind of make some shifts to the blue and you'll see how that works. Now if I pull blue to the left, if I pull the hue to the left, it's going to make those blues more green. It's changing the hue, the color tone of the blue. If I pull it to the right, it's going to make it more kind of pink and purpley, more magenta. Back to the middle, it goes back to regular blue. Now same with all these other colors. Now if I don't know which specific color I want to affect, again I have my visual tool right here where I can click and I can drag it over whatever area in the image I want and it'll tell me what color I'm adjusting. So right over here I'm adjusting my blues. If I go over the windshield area, let's see, if I go over the skin tones I'm adjusting oranges, yellows, and reds. Okay, and I can click and I can drag up or down to make any adjustments that I want. So if I want the skin tone to be a different hue, I can click and drag up to make it kind of this more, I don't know, what color that is green orange. Um, I can also click down to make it more pink and red. Okay, so it's another way of adjusting those, uh, those hues visually by just clicking anywhere in the picture and adjusting from there. Now we can also do the same thing in adjusting our saturation. So again, blue is the predominant image, uh, the predominant color in this image. So let's see what happens when we drop our blues. We're going to pull all the color out of our blues. If I go to the left, we're going to increase the saturation of our blues as I go to the right. And again, you want to be careful not to kind of over, overdo these effects because it'll make the images look a little bit too fake. But we can have direct control over the saturation of every one of these colors in the image. So maybe I want their skin tones to be uh, kind of very, very mildly orange not too poppy. And uh, I want this blue to be more blue, so I want it to be more exaggerated. So I'm just clicking on those areas, pulling up and pulling down to adjust those colors uh, respectively. Now on the next one I have luminance, and this is dealing with the color brightness. So again, starting with my blues, I'm going to bring it over, and this entire time I have this visual point thing selected. So basically I can go anywhere in my image and adjust visually. Um, I can also just adjust by these sliders, but I think it's easier just to do it this way. So I'm going to go over my blues, and I'm going to darken all my blues to kind of make it just pop a little bit more. Not too much, because if, if I go too much, you'll get these weird noise effects like around, like if you look at these clouds. It kind of creates this strange little noise uh, pixelation type effect if you, if you take it too far. And you also get this little halo effect around objects, where you have kind of like a little highlight around the edges of objects. So I'm going to pull the blues up to, say, maybe around negative 31. I'm going to darken the oranges just a tiny bit. And then maybe just pull up this side of the blues. And you'll notice that if I pull, if I'm adjusting from here, it's also going to adjust my aquas as well because it knows exactly which area I'm clicking on. So if I click over here, I'm affecting just almost purely blues, or if I click more in the sky over here, I'm going to affect blues as well as aqua. But it highlights kind of the predominant color uh, in, the, in the actual panel over there. Okay, so we can also make the same adjustments by going and showing all of them. It's the exact same thing, it just shows all the adjustments at once. We can do the exact same thing again from here, just by selecting blue, 
um, and then making those adjustments. You'll notice that once I switched and I went to blue, it actually shows all the adjustments that we've made. So those are two different views of doing the exact same thing. I prefer to stay in the hue saturation luminance view because I feel like, well, number one, I have my little visual adjustment tool, and also I think it's easier to kind of interpret the information also. Now, the next option that we have is this black and white treatment. Uh, now, if I click on this BW, it's going to automatically switch uh, my image to black and white mode, so the color treatment switches to black and white. And from here, I basically have full control over the luminosity levels of these different colors in the, in the image, in the black and white image. So if I wanted to make these uh, blues kind of a lot more contrasty and just a lot deeper and darker, I'm just going to pull them down, and it's going to make those blues darker in that black and white image. So we can make a lot of cool black and white effects by adjusting the luminosity levels of our image. And again, I have my visual point selector tool, and we can do it all visually as well. So if I want to pull down the sky, you know, any, anything I kind of want to do and adjust these, uh, these individual colors in my black and white mix right here, I can do as well. Now once again, we do have an auto-tone feature for this black and white. Again, it's one of those things that I typically wouldn't use. It doesn't really get me where I want to be, but it is available if you need it. I'm going to switch back to color, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and reset this. And we're going to go and reset our saturation as well as our luminance as well. And now let's move on to split toning.